okay so now in our previous example we have created a new work order for carrying out major service job on the truck so let's say why do we doing this uh, service job um, which is a preventive maintenance work we uh, found out that a brake of the uh, front wheel have been broken and uh, we need to fix it so uh, it depends on uh, the definition in each organization we will want to fix it immediately and uh, we record it in the same PM job or some organization want to separate that so we can create a different work order a corrective work order to fix that so we can separate the cost of PM work and a corrective maintenance work uh, so let's say in this case uh, I'm uh, the mechanic who uh, given four hours to do the uh, service job for this truck and I don't have the spare part to fix the broken brake uh, immediately so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead with my major service job and uh, continue to uh, carry out that job but I'm gonna go back to Maximo and raise a new request to fix the broken brake later on so that's what we uh, can use the uh, service request application for so let's go back to Maximo we can start by going to the work order checking application and now let's open our major, major service job so now let's pretend that we are doing this job and we want to raise a new service request so we can follow up do a follow-up work order later on so we can go in here and choose create service request so a new service request has been created we can open that by or we can uh, see the number by going to the uh, related records uh, tab here and we can see a a ticket or a service request in this case we can choose here and choose go to service requests right so in this case Maximo already recorded a uh, name my name as a reported a person and uh, some details about the uh, service request like it already fills the asset number for me so what I have to do here is just to write a short summary and description of what needs to be done. So in this case, I'm going to call it a break of left front wheel, for example. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to replacement okay so that's it now I'm gonna save it so it depends on the configuration of each implementation uh, we can have a workflow or not so generally for a workflow then we will route this to a uh, an owner or a custodian of the vehicle or going to an operation uh, supervisor to uh, review and decide whether we need to carry out a work or not sometimes uh, uh, some service requests don't necessarily have to uh, become a work um, uh, order or anything so we don't have to do anything about that so in that case then we can just close the service request but in some case we need to fix or need to do something then we can create a new work order so that is the difference between a service request and a work request so a work request is generally uh, is uh, uh, need to be uh, need to do something so in this case let's pretend that this service request is approved and uh, now we can change it to the approved status actually it's not in the doesn't have the approved status here so what we can do is let's say I'm a, a uh, operational supervisor and I'm gonna decide that we need to do something about this request so I'm gonna choose to create a new work order from this ticket so after I've done that then uh, the uh, work order has been created and now I can uh, change this to uh, 
it progress okay now if we click on the related records here we can see that we have two related work order the first one is the originator work so we know that it this service request is created from this work order and this one is a follow-up work order and if we go here we can see that uh, we have a new work order and all of the details have been associated to this uh, uh, work order like asset number description and generally uh, in uh, implementation then we uh, automatically assign this to a CM work type because this uh, is a response to a breakdown or an unplanned maintenance right so usually for an unplanned maintenance job then we will have to define a plan we can use a predefined a standard a job plan for the job but uh, in uh, many cases it is uh, something that we need to define ourselves manually so in this case let's say we need to say kill or obtain, obtain break replace minor break and uh, the next step is to Reflex it. Replace break, for example. And then we can enter labor and enter required materials. So that I'm not gonna do that because it is similar to uh, the uh, previous tutorial. But that's how we create a new service request and convert it into a work order. And after we have entered the planning information, then we can also enter our schedule start and finish date as well. And after that, then we can continue with our work uh, execution process, like we can approve the work order, we can um, change it to in progress status. So to uh, make Maximo aware that uh, we have started working on it, and it will automatically record the uh, actual start date. And if I change to complete, it will record the actual complete date for the work order. So these steps are very similar to the PM work order management process. Now, the next step which is usually associated with a corrective maintenance work is we have to report a failure information so this is a very important step for corrective maintenance work because with this uh, information recorded then we have accumulated data for a continuous improvement process so later on uh, for example uh, we can carry out a monthly failure mode analysis uh, uh, so to determine what are the common failure with a uh, uh, certain class of uh, asset and then uh, we can determine the cost of each uh, group of failure and we can uh, devise a improvement program to improve and to reduce the occurrence of this failure so in order to report a failure information to a uh, uh, asset a work order then we can go to this tab and in this case I already associate a failure class to the asset so in this case uh, maximo automatically fill out this uh, failure class in this work order for me and i only have to enter some details like remarks dates fail date for example i can enter a fail date so it knows that when uh, this uh, equipment actually get broken and i can enter three critical information so first of all it is a failure code so I will select in this case I got a problem with a break so I'm gonna choose a break here 
So with a break, then uh, I have the following um, cause of the problem. So in this case, I'm gonna select a cause. Let's say it is uh, a complete broken, for example. And then uh, the next step is to choose a uh, approach where I use to fix the problems. In this case, I replace it instead of repair. Right. So after that, then we have all of the details recorded here. And with this structure data will be very useful for us to run uh, uh, many uh, failure analytic re uh, reports like uh, bad actors or uh, other failure mode uh, and uh, analytic uh, reports. And then after that, then we can uh, go ahead and uh, do the uh, work uh, closer process and uh, we after we have attached on and enter all of the details then we can close the work order